Hello and welcome everyone, and thank you for tuning in. My name's Trent, and this is going to be my brand new podcast, Life According To. The idea behind this podcast is that I want to bring on several of my friends and other people that I may know, or may not know eventually, and learn about their lives. Talk about their life stories, life perspectives, anything that could have happened to them. Of course, when I do bring them on, it's going to be their episode, so we could talk about anything that they do want to talk about. It could be funny, it could be tragic, it could be emotional. I'm just hoping to have a lot of amazing conversations with a lot of amazing people. Of course, there's going to be other things like jokes and other topics, but the main point is that I want to spread awareness to everyone about things that people have gone through and how that makes them perceive the world around them. As for myself, you'll learn about me through the podcast. I'll be posting about a 45 or so minute podcast once a week, so you'll have plenty of conversations to listen to and really get to know me and everyone else on a personal level. Anyway, thank you for listening, and if you feel like you'd like to help somehow, the best way would be to share this podcast with everyone you can. Word of mouth, Twitter, Facebook, just blast this shit. Make everyone listen to it that you can. Please and thank you. I know it's kind of an awkward introduction, but I felt like something needed to go here. and. I know it probably sounded scripted because it was very scripted. I feel like something sincere needs to go here. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that is tuning in, that's going to listen, and for all the support that I have been receiving for this. I really appreciate everyone. I also want to say that I really appreciate the band Prince Daddy and the Hyena. I reached out to them. And I asked them if I could use their song for our intro theme for this podcast. And they texted me back and they said that it was perfectly fine with them as long as I gave them credit. So, thank you so much to Prince Daddy and the Hyena. Please everyone check them out. And let's get this shit going. Hey Mike. Hello there. How you doing today? Uh, I'm alright. Having a good day so far? It's been pretty good. Pretty good? Pretty good. Okay, so first thing first. Tell me your opinion on weed. Uh, well... I it's smoke- illegal, you're not allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> alright, moving on to the next question. Right on. <laughs> Tell me about your childhood. Uh, what about it? Maybe uh, then you have brothers and sisters. I up. have I have, well, technically I have three sisters. One of which lived just eleven days. Oh, uh, nice. uh, yeah, I was ten when that happened. That, that's kind of traumatizing. But anyway, don't hit my hand. Uh, but anyway, I have three sisters. One of which sadly isn't with us anymore. I have, uh, let's see, my oldest sister. Is two years, almost three years younger than I am. And then my youngest sister is, I think she just turned eight, maybe, seven or eight. Uh, I was 15 when she was born, and I'm 22 Aww. now, so yeah, so she's, she's, like, she's seven she's or eight. So she's like the baby. Yeah. That's so cute. Yeah. And I, I treated her like my own when she was born, you know. I was I kind that. of the dude of the house. Dad's out of town a lot. So I I guess I just sort of picked a list of raises my own kid kind of sort of pretty much became the peacekeeper of the house the man yeah <laughs> sorry my cat's kind of all over you yeah it's okay she probably smells other cats and dog and what give me my arm <laughs> thank you oh yeah this is pretty good I got to of course I come from a from a divorced family a split family that's that was fun yeah that's always rough on the kids but. Personally, I believe that it's better to find your own happiness instead of trying to stick it together for the kids because later on it's just going to impact the kids either way. I I know it can be a very hard situation to go through, but I feel like it's better to not live in a lie than to have everything sugar-coated and spoon-fed to you. Yeah. 
that's that's kind of how you know my dad and his current wife once they got together sort of raised me and my sisters pretty much if they, they had something to say it was it'd probably hurt you or offend you or whatever they just go ahead and let you have it they, there ain't no point in just sugarcoating it and lying to you and hiding the truth go ahead and know everything that way you don't you know you learn a lot of life lessons like that too though yeah but i mean having everything beaten into you is also very hard to go through as well yeah i I wouldn't say i had some things beaten into me but i I received my fair share of whoopings you know in my entire lifetime i think i've only gotten whooped twice and once when i was like young young too young to remember and then another time when i was like six and then i had never been whipped again hmm. i uh you said you was around six i think so that's when it started for me and it really didn't end until my dad decided you're 17 i'm not there's, there's no point see my dad's also older and he came from a father that did that quite often and my dad just never wanted to be like that my dad so he was always afraid to go too far yeah my dad was the exact same way he tried to from what he told me he tried to you know raise me and my sisters as best he can so that he can so that he didn't have to 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 try to punish us like his father did him which that's very respectable you don't want to end up like everyone else before you you want to come up with your new ideas you want to be your own person move on from what other people have done yeah yeah. and it's hard trying to change a mindset after growing up in a specific mindset for absolutely i personally grew up as an only child for the majority of my life i know you see preston up there now but he didn't come around until uh i was about 12 when we first got him but I was an only child until that point, and then everything flipped and changed. I was never like that. I mean, I was, like I said, I was almost three when my oldest sister was born. And I, you know, pretty much at that point, you just, you're just a kid. You don't care. You don't pay attention to it. So you never, like, I, as far as I can remember, she's been there my whole life, you know? Yeah. Because I don't remember that far back. She's been a pain in my butt the whole life. I'll tell you that. Sometimes having a sibling ain't the best thing in the world, but sometimes it's sometimes it's pretty all right. Sometimes it's nice having a pain in your butt every once in a while, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, set you straight. Yeah, it, 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 sure. <laughs> I, I probably should ask this before we started. What are your What are your language rules on here? Is this, um, a, is this a censored thing or a- come shit? Pussy, fuck. You can say whatever the fuck you want to. Uh, Uh I am an avid believer in freedom of speech. There you go. Say whatever you want, but uh, I will ask you personally to refrain from the N-word, please. Well, yeah. And I mean, you know, just stuff that would make sense. Yeah. But I don't care. We could talk about filling up pussies with cum or whatever the fuck. Well, I'm a total virgin, so... I ain't even done that. Speaking of which. <laughs> tell me more. Tell you more. Well, I I don't get out there much. I don't I keep to myself. I'm not actively searching for a a partner or anything like that. And I don't whore myself around either. Certainly not. But I mean at the same time you're also doing it for a respectable reason. You want to find someone that you actually care about, someone that you actually love before you actually go into it. Like, yeah, I fully respect that. I believe I jumped into it way too early. I've, yeah, I just haven't found a person I deemed worthy. That's understandable too. Maybe I just have high standards. I don't know. I think everyone should have standards to a degree. Uh, yeah. Some people can't have too <laughs> high of a standards, but yeah, I've I've seen some shit, my guy. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy people too, though. Yeah. A lot of people that I go just way too far. Yeah. Once I once I get to that point with somebody, I'm constantly up their ass. I get kind of clingy, but it's hard for me to get to that point. How's work been for you? Anyone piss you off lately? Uh, not, not real bad. I get more pissed off at the, 
I'll tell you what I did the other day. I got pissed off at the fry dump. And it has this little divider in it. I work, I work at Sonic. Uh, the fry dump has this little divider in it to separate your french fries and your tater tots. Right? Right. And when the thing was new a couple years ago, I was there when it was put in. When it was new, it fit there. It stayed. It didn't wobble, nothing. It was always there. At some point along the way, the the little tray that the divider sits in that you actually dump your fries into got, like, majorly bent somehow. I have no idea how. It was a pretty solid piece of equipment, but it bent somehow. And I was I was in there running the fry station by myself the other day, and I was just trying to, and it had, it had come out. It doesn't fit in there anymore. Like, at all. It won't even stand up straight. It's always leaning to one side or the other. Right, right. But it was in the way. It was, like, spread out across the thing, not just dividing it. And I tried to, like, pick it up. Of course, it's a fry station. It's hot. So I'm trying to, like, use this pair of tongs to pick it up. And I, I couldn't. So once I finally got a hold of it, I just threw the some bitch. <laughs> Did you pick it up with your hands? No. <laughs> you better not have. No, I'm not. Shit would have been hot. Yeah, I'm not that stupid. I, I've seen some stupid people, dude. I've Trust seen me. some people that would straight up just balls deep it. <laughs> firing, or firing a rifle into the air while balls deep in a squealing <laughs> hog. <laughs> That's the best card there is. Absolutely. I don't know. Hot cheese is pretty damn good, too. <laughs> hot cheese is pretty good. Uh, my last two days of work have been absolute shit. Friday night. Because today's Sunday. We're recording on uh, Sunday... The 8th? Yeah. Ninth? August the 9th, 2020. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> um, By the way, this will be the first podcast. And thank you for coming over and being on the very first recording for this podcast. I really appreciate that. Absolutely, my man. Uh, So, back... Yeah, it was Friday night. Um, We had an Uber driver come in. I work at a place called Zoe's Kitchen. We sell healthy mediterranean food um but it still tastes pretty good oh yeah it's delicious so this uber driver came and picked up some food and he took it out and then he came back but he was pissed when he came back he came back screaming his fucking head off like fuck you dude you guys forgot all my fucking food in this i don't know what the fuck's going on with your fucking establishment and we were like okay dude calm down what's going on Apparently, we had forgotten the drink for the order, but I had bagged the bag and I put the cups in there, and I know for a fact that I did not fill up the drinks for it because I was just feeling a little lazy. So, I mean, that's on me. I get that. But as an Uber driver, you should be able to look at the bag and see, huh, there's no drinks, and I'm supposed to have drinks for this order, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm not blaming myself entirely, I'm also blaming him, because that's just stupid. But, you shouldn't come in swearing at everyone in the first place. You should come in calmly, trying to get everything figured out, trying to get it solved. What he did was not appropriate. And he immediately went to, uh, I'm a shift lead, so it was one of my employees. Um, She's 20, but she looks about 16. He immediately went for her, and he was swearing her the fuck out. And I got pissed. I was about to kick this guy out. I ran to the back. Uh, lucky enough, we had the general manager there. And I went and asked him to come up and say something to this guy because I was about to just kick him out. I don't stand for anyone going after my employees. It's just not fair. You're right. So he came up. And finally, we got this guy to leave because we gave him the drinks. He was just refusing to leave for some reason. Uh, he went out to his car and he came back. Asking us about the address for where he just came from. So my general manager came up and he's like, you literally were just there. Can't you just pull it back up on your phone? You have Uber, the app. Yeah. Like, you should be able to find the address. Well, this guy was still refusing to leave. So finally, my general manager called Uber to try and figure out the address. But we couldn't figure it out because he's supposed to have it on his Uber app. So finally, at the end of it, the dude was just like, man, I'm just not going to deliver for you guys anymore, and I'm just not going to eat here. And my general manager looked him square in the eye, and he said, I think that's for the best. Good deal. 
That was very professionally handled. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what I would have said to that guy would not have been anywhere near that polite. Yeah, no, I am I am thankful that my general manager was there and was able to fix that because I was about to go ballistic on the guy. I would have yeah. kicked him out, called the cops. I I don't know. I was pissed. I don't like it when anyone goes after my coworkers. And this next story, I don't like when people threaten me. Oh, yeah? So, I had two coworkers that were working with me yesterday. Okay. And they took out half an order and decided not to tell me that they only took out half the order. So they had both left, clocked out, and left. So I was left there. What do you, what do you mean taking half the order? Like, people are sitting down and at my restaurant, we have to like pick up the food and bring it out to their table. Okay. But they had only brought out one of the guest food. But not the other. Right. So okay. she was just sitting there waiting. And I didn't know that because they didn't tell me. So I had been waiting the entire time. And we were in a rush. We had pretty much a line out to the door. And it was just me and one person working in the back. And finally this lady came up and she asked me about the food. And I yelled to the back and I was like, where's the other half of this food? And he's like, that went out a long time ago. And I was like, but apparently Shit. Not. I wish someone would have told me. Yeah. So I tried to give her her food. And she turned around felt it she turned back around and she said this is stone cold i said well wait a minute uh l- let me see that real quick i'll go heat it back up for you i'm so sorry and she said no just keep it so i went to the back i threw it away and then i came back up front and as they were walking out i could tell that they were pissed off i was like hold on guys let, let me try and comp this for you let me try and give you a refund for it so they come back i re-pull up the order And I do everything that I can to try and give them a refund on it. But as it turns out, the person that took the order had already clocked out. So I couldn't refund it. Oh. So I said, I am so sorry. I can take down your information and we can get this refunded tomorrow. But as of right now, there's nothing I can do. He said, just give it to me out of the drawer. I said, what? He said, just give me the money. And I said, sir, I literally can't do that. That is against the law. I cannot give you the money out of the drawer. He said, just give me my fucking money or I'm going to give you a bloody nose. And I said, all right, give me a sec. And I walked to the back. I just left. (laughs) (laughs) Did you you tell anybody else to go handle it or you just left him standing there? I called my manager, the general manager. Oh, yeah? Because something had happened the day before and... He already knew that I was still a little bit pissed off over that because that's not fair. And then shit happens again. And so I call him and I'm like, I don't know what to do. This dude wants a refund and he threatened me. I'm about to kick him out because he threatened me. I'm going to kick him out and call the cops because you don't threaten people. That's literally against the law. Yeah. So D walks me through how to give him a refund. We pull up web order refunds and it's like, Making a reverse order that it pays you instead is really weird. I don't fully understand it. Okay. But we finally get it figured out. I give him the refund on it. And then I run to the back to the safe to pull out two comp cards to give them two free meals for the next time that they come in. I hand it to the guy. He looks at him. He throws him back on the table and says, nope, and then leaves. What? Why? Why even? Why even bother? I tried to do everything that I could. It wasn't my fault in the first place, but I tried to do everything that I could to fix it. But they just weren't having it. I'm, I'm... Even after being threatened, I still tried to do everything that I could to fix the situation. And that's damn good of you, my man. I just... That's very, very respectable. But... why? Why would you... Why would dude do that to you? Make you go through all that work? Threaten you? You know, give you a mental breakdown? Yeah, for real. <laughs> and it just... Just piss off. And then just leave. Yeah. Not even take anything. Just get his refund, not take the comp cards or anything. And these are... What these are doing? people that literally come in, like, every single Saturday. They come in all the time. So... If they do come in again, we're definitely going to see them. I'm going to know who they are. I'm not going to take their order. I'm just going to tell them to get out. 
You don't threaten someone and then come back. Yeah. That's burning a bridge. You don't come back from that. No. Unless he, like, forwardly comes to me and fucking apologizes. Other than that, go get bent. <laughs> Let your wife peg you for a minute. Maybe you won't be so fucking rudy then. Rude. Customers are dicks sometimes. <sighs> God. Customers can be absolute shit, but they can also be really good at the same time. Oh, yeah, they're... Some of them are just amazing. One of the one of the regulars we used to have at Sonic. And this old man, I, I believe his name was Daryl. I I had become a car hop at Sonic, and I would started to get to know the the customer base a little bit because I worked, you know, pretty much all the shifts. I would open, I would close, I'd work the mid shifts. I was all over the place. But uh, I had this one dude that would come through in the morning, and every now and then he'd come through at night, like on his way back home. And he got these two large. Well, large in the morning, Route 44, because he'd come back during happy hour. Uh, Sprite Zeros with extra blackberry. I tried it. It's not as bad as you would think. It's actually really good. Now, Sprite Zero is zero carbs, right? Zero calories. Zero calories. It's basically just diet Sprite. Isn't that just soda water? Oh, with lime. (laughs) And... A little bit of lemon, but yeah. I feel like soda water is just Sprite with no flavor. No, you're thinking of... Uh, Club soda? Uh, yeah, but I was going to make another uh, a joke about a soda brand. I don't even remember which one it was. <laughs> My bad. Sierra Mist. That's it. That's just soda water. With just a tiny, tiny like bit of taste. A drop of lemon in it or something. Yeah. That's how White Claw but, is. It's like seltzer water with just a tiny drop of flavor. And a tiny drop of alcohol? Well, somehow they make it alcoholic. It, it doesn't even taste alcoholic. I, I just can't even do seltzer water. It just... I can't taste anything at all. I can only do alcoholic seltzer water just because of the alcohol. Other than that, just give me a regular water. I'd rather just have a beer and just go for it. I'm a beer guy. Yeah. I keep a... 12 pack of something in the fridge usually it's either it used to be yangling but i'm switching to cores i decided i like cores a little better oh excuse me take a look around i got like this fedka jack i'm sure i still have a fridge. bottle of uh quartzitsa somewhere oh, i got a bottle of quartzitsa in the freezer it's in the, oh you keep it in the freezer yeah that's where i keep my uh my blackened whiskey in the, the freezer me, yeah the it, it just makes whiskey. it so much more smooth Oh, yeah. Well, even if it was room temperature, you could drink blackened as a scotch, like in a lowball with, on, on the rocks. Not sponsored, but blackened by Metallica is one of the best whiskeys I have ever drank. Oh, yeah. It's it's top tier. It's expensive. It's like, I think if I, if I, and they make it in California, but if I, if I order that and have it shipped all the way out here, it brings a grand total to like $85, $90 most of the time. So you buy one of those bottles... And you make it last a while. And you don't throw it up. If that's how you if that's how you drink. But it goes down very, very smooth. Oh yeah. I drink low ball. I drink it on the rocks. It's good. It's smooth enough you can drink it on the rocks. It is really good. That's the only way that I ever drank it. Drunk it. Drank. I drunk till I got drunk. I hate the English language. <laughs> I hate it. It's horrible. I hate correct grammar that sounds incorrect. Oh, yeah. Like an unit? It, no. It would be a unit. No. It would be an unit. Oh, it would be an unit, wouldn't it? It would be an unit. No, because Y is a consonant. It, it starts with a semicolon. It starts consonant. with a U. I know it starts with a U, but it starts with the Y sound, so it doesn't follow the... It's weird. I'm pretty sure it is a unit. Because it's not an unit of measurement. It is a unit of measurement. Uh, bringing up that line from earlier, fuck the U.S. language. Yeah. English sucks. English is terrible. Too bad I don't know anything of any other languages. I know a little bit of French. I took a little bit of French in high school, but barely any of it stuck. Yeah, I, I took ever... Spanish in high school, had the same problem. I feel like I've learned more German in my off time than I ever did Spanish in a classroom. <laughs> I've learned more German through music than anything else. 
Yeah. Listening to Rammstein. Metal. Yeah, exactly, Rammstein. I can't roll my R's. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I've just... I've had practice. It's not fair. Honestly, I couldn't either until I had my tonsils taken out when I was in the third grade. Maybe that's it. Maybe I just need to go to the dentist and, like... Or the orthodontist and be like, hey, can you guys, um... No, that's just a... rip out my fucking tonsils, please. Oh, you gotta go see, like, an ENT surgeon about that, because that's a throat thing. I'll just... I'll just grab a knife. No, don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> I got some butterfly stitches in the drawer over there. Fucking why? <laughs> you know, to cut out your tonsils. Yeah, just don't do that, please. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to get that call from somebody. Yo, Trent tried to, uh, like, cut his tonsils out and, uh, had a bad time. Yeah, I don't want to get that call. Had a bad time. Had a bad time. Sounds like it would be a little bit more than just a bad time. I mean, well, it'd be a painful time, but I would consider that bad, so bad time. If there's an ambulance involved, it would be economically painful, too. Indeed. Those things cost way too much. Yeah, anything medical is outrageously expensive for no reason other than we want it, they got it. Yeah. Welcome to capitalism. Pretty much. That's pretty much anything in the medical industry is going to be that way. They, even without trying to, they're still monopolizing things. Oh, yeah. Fucking, what's the, uh, Pfizer? There's another one. I don't even remember what it is. It's like there's two or three. They pretty much just run the the whole market. pharmaceutical industry. I mean, basically, you set up the main drug, and then you get people that make like the family version, the cheaper version of the main drug. But everyone buys like the top rated version of the family version, or they get the main one. So they're still monopolizing it either way. Yeah, they're still gonna get the best ones that they can. Yeah. Just rebranding the same product. Food Club. I buy all the Food Club and the Sam's Club and whatnot. I buy all that stuff. I haven't been to Sam's Club in years. I used to... My my parents used to take me there and get me hot dogs. We used to always go to Costco. Costco was the only... Costco is still the only place I've ever found uh, a single thing of goldfish that you buy that is large enough for my personal needs <laughs> oh can, can you can you try to explain to me over this podcast about how large is that so this came in a box right and it was about probably a foot and a couple inches square and it had like three five pound bags of goldfish in it and i could have that gone in less than a week so you're saying it was about 15 pounds of goldfish? About 15 pounds of goldfish would last me a week. And how much would you say the normal American man consumes of goldfish? I don't know. And let it be stated that this man is 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 like skin and bones. Yeah. I... <laughs> 15 pounds of goldfish in a week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about 5'10", weigh about a buck 30, sopping wet on a good day. <laughs> but that's I just I love goldfish man which is weird because I'm, I'm I'm lactose intolerant and I hate cheese but I love goldfish see the thing is is that lactose intolerancy tricks you everyone that I know that's lactose intolerance loves cheese and milk products they just can't have it I don't I don't like cheese like i don't actively seek it out but if you add it to something like a you know like mac like a cheese. cheeseburger or mac and cheese then yeah it's or a pizza oh i love pizza absolutely love pizza I can, <laughs> when i when i lived alone that's that's pretty much my diet for the last like three or four years has consisted of pretty much nothing but pizza Beer, beer and hamburgers or like cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah. I it's mean, gonna catch up with me one day. For right now that's a decent party lifestyle, but I'd say for sure if you kept it up it would probably catch up to you eventually. Oh yeah. 
I would say I'm slowing down, but I'm definitely not. <laughs> You're still young. You still got some years to party it out. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel that young anymore, though. Me either, I was, dude. I was helping my dad move, uh, change his washing machine out, washing and drying machines out yesterday. And uh, I kind of threw out my back a little bit. <laughs> That shit will make you feel older than anything else, trying to move furniture. I helped my friend move into his new apartment that's on the third story. Third story. And that's where I used to live. <laughs> yeah, but, like, the stairs were super narrow, and we had to carry a bunch of mattresses and uh, box springs and stuff up. And it was just me, him, and two other guys moving, like... Two U-Hauls and two truckloads filled to the third apartment just for them to have a little moving party to get in. And after that, nothing makes you feel older. Well, you remember that apartment I had? It was up on the third floor. It was a nice one, too. Uh, yeah, it was about 500 square foot uh, single bedroom. The bedroom was pretty much just a giant closet to me. I lived in the living room. I had yeah, this, I saw how you lived. I have this, uh, oh yeah. Oh, I'll explain <laughs> that. I'm proud of that. Uh, <laughs> you can explain whatever you want, dude. I, uh, I've i got this couch that I bought off the Facebook Marketplace for $30. This couch was, I, I found the tag on it. It was made in like 77. Nice ass couch, by the way. Like super nice. Oh yeah. It's, uh, all the cushions are stuffed. They have feathers in them. But, $30 uh, is a steal. Yeah. That's, uh, they were like, man, they, my parents found it. They said, I found a couch for 30 bucks. I said, here's $30 in, in cash in hand. I have to work tomorrow. Can you go get that for me? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it's like a, it's like a nine foot, it's like a nine and a half foot couch. I measured it one day. Like a nine and a half foot couch. And it's probably three foot deep. It doesn't fold out. It doesn't have any reclining spots. Which is like the only downsides to that couch, but it's a it's a nice couch. It's it's softer than any bed I've ever slept in, which is why when I you know moved out of my parents' house and bought it that couch, much became your bed. The couch has been my bed since. I don't blame you though. That that is a nice ass couch. Yeah, it's it ain't done me wrong yet. What was I talking about? I brought up the oh uh, that apartment I lived in. We had to we had to move that couch in and out of that apartment. On the third floor. That's a heavy-ass couch, too. That couch is huge. Yeah. You know that, that cut that's in the middle of it on the backrest? Yeah. That come from trying to get it out. Somebody scraped it against the door. We had to take... We had to take my bedroom door off. We had to take the closet doors off. We had to take the actual, like, apartment room door off. Just to get that couch out of there. Dad kept trying to get me to saw it in half. I said, so, wait, no. saw the couch in her? Saw the couch in, just to get it out the door. What, what were we going to do, like nail it back together? I Screw it back? Probably use one of those big old, those big old like patch nails. I don't, I have no idea what they're called. I got some duct tape. Oh yeah, I've always got a roll of, <laughs> I've always got a roll of teal duct tape somewhere. <laughs> duct tape the couch that's been cut in half back together. To show you the power of flex seal, I cut my couch in half. No. Absolutely not. I never <laughs> do that. That couch was definitely a bitch and a half to move. Anywhere, I've moved it. I moved it in one apartment, out that apartment, into another apartment, and out of that apartment, and then into Devin's house. Which is where you're staying now? Yeah. How's that going? That's going. Still going? I live on my couch in the living room. Yeah. I have a... Play guitar. Play, yeah. And bass. I'm not great at it by any stretch of the imagination. You're you're better than, like, moderate, though. You're, you're above average. Oh, I appreciate that. But I'm inclined to disagree. <laughs> I guess that's just me, though. I personally would say that you're above average. I've heard you play on it, and... I've seen you do a lot of tricky finger works on it fingering <laughs> if you say yeah yeah i'd call that fingering but yeah i'd say you're definitely above average 
Well, I appreciate that, my man. Of course. Now, I think you said you wanted to explain your apartment to us. Oh, yes. I, uh... I've been a I've been a bachelor for quite some time. Um, that's why I, I lived alone in this single bedroom apartment, and I had like all the furniture I had was I had this like plastic outdoor table. I had a couple of wooden chairs. That as soon as I moved into that apartment, somebody, one of my bigger friends, sat down on and just broke the leg right off. Bigger as in. I don't remember if it was Lewis or Tibbetts, but these guys are probably about three fifty on a good day. On a Tibbets good is, day, Tibbetts especially. Is, Tibbetts is a large man. Tibbetts is like. Uh, have you met Tibbetts? I have. I met Tibbetts and Colin, his brother. Right. Colin. Colin ain't small neither. Nope. But well, say, they told us their diet. Pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And yeah, and mac and cheese and pop tarts and yeah, it's not it's not the best diet, but they're living a happy life. That's well, well, I drink beer as well, so I guess their diet's kind of better than mine. (laughs) I mean, yes, beer's bad for you, but it is also good for you in cases. In cases. Well, if a glass of wine can keep a doctor away, surely me drinking a pretzel can... A pretzel? uh, Yeah. (laughs) Have you ever... uh, Have you tried gangling black and tan before? (laughs) Don't they call beer, like, liquid bread? Yeah, liquid bread. Or, uh... It's water to me. I actually have a picture. I mean, you can't see it, obviously. Turn water to beer. The yeah. redneck Jesus. Yeah. Cletus. There you go. <laughs> he fucked his sister for our sayings. <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn you. Oh my god. Uh, I have this uh, picture from a festival I went to a couple years ago where the uh, guy that was playing up on stage, he brought a bottle of water out on the stage with him. And then, you know, not too long into his set, I happened to be standing right in front of him. Like this is a, there's no seats. It's a it's a mud pit. Right. This right. is what's in front of this stage. And uh, I happened to be standing like right in front of him, and he saw I had a cooler on my back. I had the beer cooler. And he's a Swedish. He's a Swedish man. Writes kind of a death metal sort of vibe. I don't. I think he. What does he call it? He calls it Blues Trash. This is Reverend Beatman I'm talking about. He's, he's an amazing man. He's from he's from Sweden. And he looked at me in this nice little Swedish accent after screaming at us in this nice Swedish accent. He said, young man, could I have a beer? <laughs> Absolutely. And I just rotated that pack around. Of anymore. course you can have a beer. Yeah. No, I... Uh, no, I handed it up there to him, and he set it down on the stage next to his bottle of water, and I snapped a picture of that. And now when I show it to people, I was like, look, water and diet water. <laughs> That's so cool. I uh, love I love meeting music artists. I've met a couple myself, personally. Uh, I met the band Ice Nine Kills, which is... The band Ice Nine Kills, which they do a lot of music that's influenced by horror movies. Especially with their last album. Okay. Like, every single song on there was about a different horror movie. Uh, it That's was cool. really cool. Right on. Um, we actually got VIP passes when we went and saw them. And yeah. we got to team up with a different member of the band. And my team specifically got to team up with a lead singer. His name's Spencer. I got a really nice picture with him, too. He's a really cool guy. Hell yeah. Um, we did, like, a horror movie trivia. And the lead singer, he knew the answer to every single one of those questions. Cool. The the other band members had no idea. They had like 21 right. There was like 30 questions in total. They all had like 21 right max. And then Mm -hmm. the lead singer, like every single one, the moment they asked the question, he nailed it. Right on. And then I will always treasure this. I got to meet the lead singer 
a five finger death punch and shake his hand. Oh yeah. Really great dude. Um me and my buddy Josh, uh real big guy, he's gonna be on this podcast at some point. Um <laughs> I look forward to hearing that one. <laughs> Absolutely. I love him. He's gonna be on here so much. Uh, I, I plan on having everyone on here, really. I, I want you to come back, definitely. I want to have multiple episodes with everyone. Oh, right on. Um, me and him were working uh, Dish for a concert that Three Days Grace, Five Finger Death Punch, and a couple of other bands were doing. Um, we were working Dish for their private section for all the band members and their families to like, sit down and go eat food. And we did Dish pretty much all day long. It was from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we got paid. I don't remember. I don't remember how much we got paid for the day. It, it was it was really good pay, but it was too long ago. Um, but at the very end of the day, when we were packing everything up and Five Finger Death Punch was about to go on, I was taking a load out to the bus that they were packing up all the dishes. And the lead singer was out there smoking a cigarette. He walks up to me and he stops me. He's like, you know, I just want to say I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Like, I know you guys probably get a lot of shit for just working dish. And I know a lot of people can be really mean. They don't really see you as great and they look down on you. But I want you to know that I personally really appreciate what you guys have done tonight. Hell yeah. And I was like, I really appreciate that you said that to me. You're the lead singer of Five Finger Death Punch, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> he said, yeah, I am. It's nice to meet you. And then he held out his hand and he shook my hand. Oh, that's amazing. He was a really neat guy. We we talked for a little bit. We cut shit. And then towards the end of it, some other people were calling me because they were kind of jealous that the, the lead singer walked up to me rather than like just anyone just else that you was there. Everybody. Yeah. And they, they called me over to come get the rest of the stuff on the bus because they were wanting to head out and they were all jealous. But um, before he left, he was like, you know, I look forward to the next time we get to talk. Really? Yeah. And from that moment, I was like, huh. That's cool. I got to see this guy again at some point. Really great guy. I absolutely loved him. Right on. And we also got to sneak backstage afterwards to see the concert play out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because like when we finished was right on time for Five Finger Death Punch to do their ending show. And oh my God, it was amazing. Oh, I bet. We got to sneak, like, right onto the the very middle of the floor where the soundstage was, where there's, like, no one else, and just sit there and watch it pretty much by ourselves. It was amazing. Hell yeah. Can't say I've ever... Never met anybody, like, even remotely famous. Hey, man. Famous is subjective. It, indeed it is. Because, I mean, I... I would have no idea who that man was had I just bumped into him. Exactly. I, don't, I don't. I don't listen to Five Finger Death Punch. It's not that I'm not into that kind of music. I'm just not into their style of music. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Right. Right. Music as well is also subjective. Oh yeah, totally. Because I <laughs> I listen to lots of stuff. I listen to Pokemon. Ween. Yeah, I love Ween. Uh. Great Ghost. band called yeah Ghost. A uh, great band called Ninja Sex Party. It's a great band. It's love a them. Fabulous band. Uh, listen to love a band called Sleep. I've seen them in concert. The same uh, festival where I saw uh, Riff and Beat Man. Oh really? Yeah. It was either later that night or the next night. I uh, watched Sleep. Shout out it to was... all these bands, by the way. Not sponsored. Not sponsored, but these guys are definitely like. Hashtag please sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> uh well yeah who else uh there was an old band from the the 80s They're like a punk band i never remember the name of them they did uh silent majority they had a, the, the song was on gta 5 on the punk channel oh god silent majority i haven't played gta in forever dude i haven't either uh Well, that's a that was, that was a punk band covering a Slayer song, if you can believe that. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, abolish government, who abolish did, uh, government, silent majority. Who did Anna Gata De Vida? Oh, Iron Butterfly. Interesting Iron story. Butterfly. Interesting story. Iron Butterfly, um, occupied the house next to the house that my grandmother lived in 
in Colorado back in the 60s. And they were out there every Friday night practicing in Agata de Vida huh. and playing it. And she got to hear it every night. That's so cool. Yeah. That's such a pleasant to hear song, too. It's just, it just sounds so good. Yeah. Which is really good for 1966, 67, I think. Yeah, for real. This, just a guitarist, a bassist, dude singing, guy on the keyboards, and a drummer was... If you ever check out the video for In Agata De Vida, watch like the full one that has like the eight and a half minute drum solo in the middle of it, because they show the video of the drummer doing that. Huh. And this this drummer's on something. Obviously, like you don't just get that into it. He was he was losing it on that drum kit. Have you ever seen the drummer for Def Leppard? Oh yeah, one arm dude. Yeah, watching him drum is like he's a always miracle. got the biggest smile on his face. He's just I love watching him. What a guy! I don't like Def Leppard enough to like. I like a couple of their songs. I I just I really like watching their drummer do his thing. Oh yeah, than anything else? Yeah. See, he, he seems to have such a good time doing it. Oh yeah. I mean, if you only got one arm and you're still playing drums, but you're playing drums that fucking good and no one else can, like, stand up to you because you only got one arm, I mean... Well, apparently he couldn't keep time before before he lost his arm. But now that he's, he's had to switch up his playing style and just use the one arm, apparently he keeps him time. Down. Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I'll just cut out my tonsils with a knife that's in the drawer over Stop. there. Stop! <laughs> Bring it back to that. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you coming over and talking. Oh yeah, it's always it's always good talking to you, man. Uh, unfortunately, it's about time to wrap it up for right now. Oh yeah, but tragic. Don't Thank you about... so much. Oh, you're welcome, my man.